We begin today's shir at the beginning of the new parak, parak Ho'isha Basra, the 16th parak of Maseches Yivomis. The mission, as you can see, begins at the top of the daf. On the side of our daf, we have the no say, the topic heading where we've written Ma Dino Shel Isha What is the law regarding a woman Shaholcha Baila Vitsarosa Liasayam where a woman's husband and co-wife went abroad Veheidu Shemes Baila and testimony was stated regarding the death of her husband the Mishnah Isha Shaholach Baila Vitsarosa Liasayam the subject of our Mishnah is the woman who remains behind. So her husband and the co-wife went abroad, Ubo vi Omru law, and they came and told her, Mes Baalech, your husband died. Lo Tinose the Lo Tisyabem. She should not marry out, that marry some uh, outsider, nor should she do Yibum marry the husband's surviving brother? Ad sheteda shema muuberes hitzorasa until it becomes known whether the co-wife was pregnant. Of course, if the co-wife was pregnant and bears a child, so there's no mitzvah of Yibum because you're dealing with a man who died leaving a child. Hoisa lo chamois. The woman who remained behind happened to have a mother-in-law abroad. Now, a mother-in-law, that means it's her husband's mother. If she gives birth, if she has a child, that's her husband's brother. So, if a woman that we described above happens to have a mother-in-law abroad, Enaw Chosheshes, she doesn't have to consider that which we mentioned just a moment before, that the woman gave birth and the birth was to a boy. Now, why do we not have to concern ourselves with that? Well, because the, the mother-in-law <coughs> bearing a child that will mechaev, that will bind this woman to Yibum, is of a minority possibility. Namely, a woman who gives birth, there's uh, a chance that it's a male, chance that it's a female. If it's a female, so in this case, a mother-in-law's bearing a female is not going to result in a mitzvah yibum. Only if she bears a male. But amongst all births, there are some miscarriages. So if you take the uh, live births of females plus the miscarriages take that all into consideration you will find that the male births are a minority chance if the mother-in-law is Yotsusa Malaya if she left while pregnant in contrast to the case just before where we didn't know whether or not the mother in was pregnant it was a a chashash that maybe she was pregnant. Here we know she was pregnant and she left our vicinity in that state. Then, chashash is then maybe she will give birth to a male. Rabbi Yeshua Oimer Eino Chashash. Rabbi Yeshua, even in this case, is not chashash, does not concern himself with that possibility. Now, just to go over some of these points through the Rashi, we look at Rashi. Uh, toward the top of the page, Hoy Solo Chamois, four lines from the top, and a woman had a mother in law abroad, Ukshiotza, Lohoyolo Ben, when the mother in law left our vicinity, she did not have a son, Vien Yavam Lazu. And as a result, the, the uh, husband of our subject doesn't have, uh, doesn't not, his not having a brother doesn't leave the wife with a Yavam to concern herself with. A Yavam being the brother of one's husband. So, Eino Chosheshes, she does not have to concern herself or figure, Shemonitan lo Yavam, maybe a Yavam was born. Afagav the Chayshinu Le'el Shema Yolda Tzora, even though at the beginning of the Mishnah, we saw that the woman who remained behind had to concern herself, 
maybe the co-wife gave birth so what about this co-wife versus mother-in-law and how much do we have to be hoshesh in the case of the co-wife it's different hasamhu in that case the choma de yolda tzora ben zachar ben ikeva mapik law laha miyavam a co-wife giving birth that means she's providing a child to the husband <coughs> And upon his death, whether the child that was provided was a male or female, that will exempt from Yibum. You're dealing with a man that dies leaving a child, whether it's male or female. There's, in it there. There's no more Yibum need that needs to be done. So, there we've increased the chances of a Yibum exemption by saying that all live births will result in an exemption from Yibum. Avol Chamois but in the case of a mother-in-law that we didn't see pregnant, dinami yolda, even if the mother-in-law gives birth, lo sokik lo lahach elun ken yolda zachar, it doesn't bind the woman that remained behind. We'll say the daughter-in-law doesn't bind her to yibum unless that mother-in-law gives birth to a male child. The kulehai lo chayshinon shema yolda vezachar haya, where that far we don't have to go. That maybe she gave birth. And that that even if she gave birth, that it happened to be a male child. We saw, though, that the picture changed according to the Tanakama. If the mother-in-law left our vicinity pregnant, then we're only concerning ourselves with maybe it was a male. Rabbi Yeshua, though, even then, says he's not Choshesh because... Fine, I saw the mother-in-law pregnant. Maybe it's a miscarriage. And even if it's not a miscarriage, maybe it's a female birth, uh, which also would not result in any yibum obligation on the part of the woman that remained behind. <clears throat> the Gomorrah. My he tsarasa. If you see, we have a little arrow to the side of the Gomorrah text. You just go up two lines. You see the parallel arrow. The Mishnah used the expression that a, uh, a a woman, a wife, whose husband and co-wife went abroad, she's not allowed to do Yibum until she finds out whether the Tzorot, so the co-wife, was pregnant. The Mishnah used the expression, he Tzorosa, that he, <clears throat> not just saying Shema Muberes Tzorosa, but Shema Muberes he Tzorosa. My he tsarasa. What's that added word in, uh, telling us, instructing us? Ha komash malon. The following is what we have to uh, learn from that. Laha tsara hu dechayshinon. For the tsara that we knew about, that's the one we have to worry about. However, avalitsara chriti. But to suspect that the husband went abroad, married another woman, lo, chayshino, that far <clears throat> we don't have to go. So if uh, witnesses came telling us that the co-wife was not pregnant, then the woman who remained behind does not have to consider any restriction uh, and she would be allowed to do yibum any restriction meaning yibum wise and uh, therefore being that her husband and she had no children being that there's witnesses that the co-wife was not pregnant being that we don't have to consider maybe the husband married another woman abroad so the woman that remained behind can now go ahead and do yibum the Mishnah told us that in the meantime the woman who remained behind <coughs> that, uh, was told that her husband died. The Mishnah said, Lo tino se, the lotus yabeng, two things. She shouldn't marry out, nor should she marry the surviving brother in law in mitzvah zibom. On the side of the Gemara, we have a note, the no se, mivne, note. And we also indicate that this structure will continue till omid base. So it's a rather lengthy structure to take note of. We have two types of triangles that you see. Hagemora, Bishnei, Shlavim. The Gemara will appear in two stages. Number one, Kedei Lahasbir Hamishna Delotinose Velotis Yabem. 
Hagemoro Sheeles. In order to explain this expression, she shall not marry out, nor shall she do Yibum. The Gemara will ask, Lemo Masnisin Rebbe Meir he. Should we say that our mission is in accordance with Rebbe Meir? And that's the direction taken when you see a Gemara, when you see a triangle facing upwards. The inverted triangle represents Dechios Fakushos, rejections of that suggestion and, and questions that are raised. Then stage two, Achresha Gemara Meres Machvarto Masnisin Rebbe Meir he, that it appears most likely then that our Mishnah is in accordance with Rebbe Meir. Hagemora Boichenes Chuvazu. The Gemara will be will be look, taking a critical look at that answer. The triangle that you see, the tips covered in, are as such. The tip facing up represents Kushios, and the inverted type triangle there are Chuvas or responses. So now the Gemara. Bishlama Yibumi Lo. That I can understand that. The woman who remained behind, who simply heard that her husband died, but there was a, that we know that there was a co-wife. So I understand she shouldn't do Yibum, the Dilma, Miabra, the co-wife might be pregnant. The Kopoga, Biashis Ach, Do Raisa. And by marrying a brother in law, by doing Yibum, this woman that remained behind would be violating a Torah level prohibition of marrying her husband's brother. In other words, the man would be violating by taking her his brother's wife. Uh, a man is not allowed to marry a brother's wife in the event that there are that the brother had children. So we don't want the woman, the wife that remained behind, doing yibum. Ella, lo tino, saying, am I? The mission also says that the woman that remained behind uh, before she gains any knowledge about the status of her sister-in-law, she shall not marry la shuk. She, the woman who remained behind, cannot marry out. Why not? Am I? Why not? Halo chacha rov noshim, for rov noshim, mis abros viodos. Why not? follow the majority of women and the majority of women become pregnant and give birth so now our Mishnah nevertheless does not allow her to marry out should we say that our Mishnah in its restrictive approach is of the opinion of Rabbi Meir that factors in that takes into consideration the minority of cases and in this case, the minority of cases states that the co-wife did not become pregnant and give birth. And therefore, the woman who remained behind is a candidate for ye woman. She cannot, therefore, marry out. So is our Mishnah then only according to Rebbe Mayer? The Gemara responds and says, not so. Afilu temo rabonon. Ki azli rabonon bosa ruba. When is it that the Rabbonon rule according to the majority case, the majority of cases, the majority situations? Ruba di ise kamon. That's when you're dealing with a majority that is in front of us, a present majority. Kagon. Teisha Chanuyos, the Sanhedri. We'll first start with the case of Sanhedri. A court ruling. And a court, Rashi's example, of a court of 23, which is considered a, a uh, minor Sanhedrin, and 12 rule innocent and 11 rule guilty. So we follow the majority, the 12 who said innocent. And that's called a Ruba de Isse Come on, that's a rove. They are in front of us, the 23 judges that constitute a Sanhedrin. They are presently in front of us. And in cases like that, we follow the majority. The case of Teisha Chanuyos involves a number of shops uh, where there are, let's say you have a, a, a row of ten stores and nine of them are selling uh, kosher meat and one is selling unkosher meat. You find a piece of meat outside the row of stores. 
So if you find a piece of meat outside the row of stores, we say, look, the majority of stores were selling kosher meat. So you can take that meat and eat it. But again, the case of the stores, the nine kosher stores, they're all in front of you. Avaruba de lesse come on, but when you're dealing with a rove that is not in front of us, it's a world, uh, it's a, a majority that exists in the world, the world of women. As, as is the case over here, the world of women uh, will become pregnant and give birth. So that when you have a rove, the less they come on, that's not in our presence, lo asli rabonon bosor ruba. The, the rove is not going to be, the, the rove means the majority is not going to be a deciding factor. And therefore, the Rabbonon as well are not going to be influenced by that majority phenomenon. And therefore, in our Mishnah's restriction of her marrying, Lashuk is not a reflection of, of Rabbi Meir alone. The Gemara asks, now notice this is a long question, you just told us in our in the most recent answer that the Rabbonon do not follow a rove when it's a Ruba de Lesa come on. Vehare Kotonuktana to Ruba de Lesa come on he the issue of a male or female minor, which will be explained very shortly in the Gemara, but the issue concerning them will be an issue of the world of minors. It's a rove de Lesa come on. They're not in front of us. The Asli Rabbonon Basar Ruba and the Rabbonon do follow the majority. Desanya Koton Uktana Lo Chotzin Velo Miyabmin Divrei Rebbe Meir A minor male or female do not participate in the mitzvahs of Yibum. They don't do Chalitza nor do they do Yibum. This is Rebbe Meir's opinion. Amru Lo the Rebbe Meir Yafel Mar Tashen Chotzin Granted that which you say of uh, the minors not in, engaged in, they don't engage in chalitza, ish ksiv Baparsha, the posuk that deals with yibum deals, mentions the word ish, uh, the, the posuk that deals primarily with chalitza mentions ish, which indicates an adult, umakshinon, and we compare isha le ish. The female also must be an adult. So the word ish, which is stated in the context of chalitza, precludes or say excludes a minor, whether it be male or female. Elomatam in miyabin. Why is it that a female or male minor do not do yibum? Omar lohem. So Rabbi Meir answers. Koton, the uh, minor shemu yimsa soros. He might develop into a saurus. Right now, he's a minor, so we can't tell for sure how he will mature, but there are those, a minority, and that needs to be emphasized, a minority of males that don't mature normally, and they become a uh, what's called a saurus, a person who is incapable of procreation. Tano, the exclusion of a tano, shamotim island is also the, we'll say, the female equivalent of a woman that is incapable of procreation, and the mitzvah of Yibum is predicated on procreation, that the surviving brother will marry the widow and and bring forth a child that will be the extension, the maintenance of the name of the deceased. And if the cotton and katana turn out to be either a saurus or an islandess, so then the it, they they are not they are irrelevant to the mitzvah of yibum. So if they're irrelevant to the mitzvah of yibum, v'nimtsu poigin be'erva, and that leaves it as simply a b- brother-in-law sister-in-law relationship, which is basically forbidden. If it's outside the context of procreation, it's a forbidden relationship. That's called erva. So, what do we see? We see, uh, in contrast to Rabbi Meir, you see the Rabbonon that aren't concerning themselves with this. The Rabbonon Savri, Zil Bosaruba Diktanim, follow the majority of minors, Varov Tanim Lavsri Sininhu. 
the Rabbonin who argue with Rebbe Meir will tell you that the majority of minors do not turn into Srisim, they mature into normal male adults. Zeal, Bosa, Rov, Tanos follow the majority of minor females, Veroiv, Tanos, Lav, Ilanisinu, and as they mature, they don't turn into Ilanios. So the Rabbonan will follow the majority under all circumstances, whether it's a Ruba the Issei come on, or even Aruba the Lesse come on. The majority of, of children are not in front of us, they're the majority of the world's children. They mature into healthy adults. So the Rabbonon follow the Rove. So we, this brings us back to our original question. Why is it that the uh, woman who remained behind cannot marry out? The chances are that the sister-in-law that had gone abroad became pregnant and bore a child which would release the woman who stayed behind from mitzvah's yibum. So why not marry out? Ella, machvarto masnisin rebi meir hees. We have to come back to the original suggestion that our Mishnah in fact is rebi meir. And Rebbe Meir is the one that takes in cons- into consideration the minority of chances. And in, in our case specifically, there is a minority possibility that the co-wife did not become pregnant and bear a child. And, and as a result, the woman that remained behind w- is bound to the Yavam, and therefore she cannot marry Lashuk, she cannot marry someone else. Bimai Ukimta. So, how have we set up our Mishnah? To Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Meir, who is Choshesh Lemiu. Note that we're in the, at the beginning of a long question. Okay, so it's Rebbe Meir. Amos Seifa. State the continuation. Hoisa lo chamois. Eino Chosheshes. We saw this in our Mishnah. That if there was a mother in law who was abroad, so the, uh, the uh, wife who stayed behind, doesn't have to consider that the mother-in-law bore a, uh, a, a, a brother, a child, a son to the mother-in-law, that is, and would be her hus- the woman's husband's brother. Well, am I, if our mission is in accordance with every mayor, why do you say that you don't have to concern yourself with the mother-in-law? <laughs> Follow the majority of women, and they... Uh, uh, become pregnant and bear children mute mapilos a minority miscarry v'chol hayoldos of all those that give birth mechza zecharam u'mechza nekevis part are the half are male and half are female smoch miuta de mapilos l'mechza de nekevos attach the minority of miscarriages to the 50% of live births v'havun hu zecharam miuta the male Births represent male live births represent a minority, but Valechus, you should, since our Mishnah is being set up as Rebbe Mayor, you should consider the minority chance, and therefore maybe the mother in law did give birth to a male child, which would be the a husband, a, a brother of the woman's husband, the woman who stayed behind. Her husband now has a brother. So, uh, why does our Mishnah say that if the only area of doubt was the mother-in-law, that's not the reason for any concern? The Gemara responds, Dilma kevon de ichsika l'shuk lo chayish. Since we're dealing with a woman that did not have a, whose husband did not have a known brother, and as such, uh, with the death of her husband, leaving no brothers, no known brothers, so this woman is available to marry. She is free to marry Lashuk. So she had a Shuk status. And because of that, we're not Choshesh. The Gemara asks, oh, you're going according to the, the known status. Reisha Tirsik Li'ivum Tiabem in the Reisha where there was a brother and we have a woman who doesn't have children, and the Sora, uh, we don't know her to have had children. So you have a woman where there was a chazoka status of, of her being uh, eligible for Yibum. Why doesn't she 
do Yibum in the Reisha. The Reisha said, Lo Tino Seva Lotus Yabeim. Omar Rav Nachman, Omar Rabo Baravua. Reisha, the Isur Koreis Choshishu. In the case of the Reisha, where the question was, should she do Yibum based on that Chazoka? Well, what does Yibum mean? It means that the woman who stayed behind is going to marry her husband's brother. If there is a mitzvah, that's great. But if it's not b'mokoi mitzvah, if that co-wife actually became pregnant and has a child, so the yibum that the reisha uh, represents, because there it's a case where there's a brother, that would be an iser kores if in fact that sora had a child. Kores is a very se- represents a very se- it's a very severe punishment and it represents we're dealing with a very severe offense. So in the Reisha, we, we take with this, we'll say this preemptive measure of Choshishin, and we don't allow her to do Yibum. Seifa, however, where it's a question of the mother-in-law, and there's no known brother, what's the problem here that the, 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 the woman wants to marry Lashuk, the Esor Lav, where if if there would be a, a brother and she would not be marrying him, she wouldn't be doing yibum, but rather marries Lashuk, that would be a negative violation. Low chashishu, it's a low, le, lower level offense. And therefore, we don't impose any restriction, and therefore the Mishnah says, low chashishu. If you have a woman whose husband had no known brothers, and the only possibility is, is that the mother-in-law that's not in front of us anymore, maybe she bore a, a son, that's the, 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 the worst case scenario is that you have a, the woman that remained by would be marrying Lashuk when there is a, a, a son to the mother-in-law. That's a laugh, Yavoma Lashuk. So they didn't worry about that. Omar Rova, Michti. Rova has a question, and he says, let's look into this. Ha de Raisa, the Ha de Oraisa. Both concerns are concerns that maybe there is a Torah level violation. Mali Isur Kores, Mali Isur Lav. What difference does it make whether it's an Isur Kores, as the ratio represents, and we saw, in fact, restriction, and the Seifa, where there's also an Isur Doraisa of Yevoma Lashuk, a woman who's bound to a Yavam that marries out, that marries someone from the public, is violating an Isur Doraisa. So, they're both Isur Doraisa, and we have a principle, and when you have a suffix concerning an Isur Doraisa, we are to take a, a restrictive approach. Therefore, we have to go back to try to understand why in the ratio do we say are we chayshinon, are we concerned? And in the seifa, we're not choshesh. The seifa being the case of the mother-in-law. Elo Omar Rava. We continue at the top of Omid Beis. Reisha chazoka leyibom. In the Reisha, where the sister-in-law had gone abroad, there was a chazoka, there was a status of the woman who remained behind to do yibum. Because at this point there were no, that husband had no known children. So there's a status of Yibum, for Ruba. However, there's a, uh, there's a rove, we'll say, of a competing nature that the majority of women become pregnant and give birth. So that, that sister in law is very likely to have, we'll say, neutralized the mitzvah of Yibum. So on the one hand, the chazaka is in the direction of Yibum. The roiv, that the majority of women, in this case the co-wife being part of that majority, gets pregnant and gives birth. So the roiv is against Yibum. The chazaka lo yodiv ki ruba, the strength in, in halachic terms of a chazaka, chazaka means go according to a known status in order to determine matters, that method of resolving doubt is not as strong Lo odif, it's not as strong ki ruba as following a majority. So just to review that point, a the chazaka meaning in the direction of yibum is not as strong as the rove which points in the direction of marrying the shuk. However, the icy miuta de mapilois now consider the minority of of women who become pregnant 
that miscarry. Now, the, the miscarriage represents a case where the the uh, the uh, co-wife, if she gave birth, but it's a type of birth that's it's called stillborn, and it wouldn't exempt from evil. So you take that mute of mapilo, samoich lechazoka, attach it to the chazoka, and we say attach it, we're dealing with abstract concepts right now, but we're dealing with halachic tools in order to determine doubts. So you take the uh, minority of Mapilos, attach it to the Chazoka, which was, which was in the direction of Yibum, just like the Hapola, a miscarriage is in direction of Yibum, Vahavilei, Palgu, Palga. And now you have created a situation of 50% in the direction of Yibum and 50% in the direction of marrying Lashuk. Lotinose, Velotis Yabem. The result of creating a 50 50 situation is that she can't marry out and she will not do Yibum. Seifa, where there was a mother in law and the husband had no known brothers. And the husband is reported dead. The Chazaka is Lashuk. The Chazaka, the status of this woman that remained behind, is one of being able to marry out. Her husband has no brother, has no known brother. The Ruba, the majority possibility, is Lashuk. What's the, what was the, the, what's the Ruba over here? The issue of the mother in law uh, conceiving and giving birth. The rove of her births are in the direction of non yebom. Remember, there's the females she might bear, there are the miscarriages. miuta de miuta. The zechorim become a minority of a minority. Look at all of the factors here. You've got a chazaka pointing lashuk, you've got the rove pointing lashuk. So with these in mind, the zechorim become a minority of a minority. Umiuto, de miuto, lo chayesh, Rebbe Meir. Even Rebbe Meir, who is choshesh for minority, for the mute, not when it's such a minor type mute, as is the case over here. And just to repeat that last point, the mute that would restrict the, the wife that stayed behind the, from marrying out is so insignificant we don't, even Rabbi Meir would not take that into consideration. And therefore, we saw in the case of the Chamos, we said, Lo Choshishin, and the uh, woman who remained behind w- would be able to marry Lashuk. Loi Tinose, Veloi Tisyabem. The Mishnah described the woman whose husband and co-wife had gone abroad, so she, the woman who remained behind, shall not marry out, and she should not do yibum. The Gemara asks, Uli Oilam, <clears throat> shall this remain forever? Why doesn't she just do chalitza, mimon afshach, and then marry lashuk? <clears throat> the uh, brother of her husband could do chalitza with her, and that will free her from any <clears throat> Yibum connection and thereby be able to marry Beheter, someone else. So the Gemara explains, and maybe before we go on, let us first take a look on the side of the Gemara. We have our Nosei Mivne heading. A triangle appears. The triangles represent Shnei Deois, two opinions, Be'inyan Kamazman Hamtona, how much waiting time Nidrash is required, Kedei Lahatir Ho'isha Shenishara Khan, to enable her to become Muteris. This woman who remained here, Achrei Shabaylu Vitzrosa Nosun Diasayam, Veloyodu Matzavatzara, after her husband and the co-wife had gone abroad and we don't know the co-wife situation <clears throat> how, how much time does she have to wait in order to do chalitza and then marry out so the Gemara explains we said that we have two approaches Omar Ziri Laatzma means because of herself she has to wait three months as any woman who was married must wait in order to determine 
if she is pregnant or not. <clears throat> we, we have to determine who the father is of this of a child. So she has to wait three months because of her own uh, her her uh, herself being the cause of waiting, her own possible pregnancy. Lechaverta. A, the Chaverta is her co- the co-wife, her, literally her friend, but it means her co-wife, <clears throat> she has to wait Tisha. Wait, she has to wait nine months. Vichoyletsis Mimon of And then after that period, uh, she'll then be able to do Chalitza. So, the, of course, the, the three months that she waits for herself will overlap with the nine months of the co-wife. <clears throat> so that at the end of nine months... She'll be able to do uh, chalitza. Now you will ask, why is that necessary? So, as far as the co-wife is concerned, if she in fact uh, became pregnant and bore a child, <coughs> so the uh, exemption uh, from yibum would be a result of that child, and a child exempts only through its emergence from birth. <clears throat> In other words, it emerges what we call avir olam. Comes, it, it leaves the woman's uh, womb and is born. So that in, <clears throat> in order for <clears throat> uh, to cover ourselves, to make sure that the uh, pre- pregnancy which was results in a child is going to be an effective means of releasing this woman the uh, w- wife who stayed behind from Ibum the co-wife would have had to given birth, would have to have given birth <clears throat> and only then is the uh, the wife freed so now after that <clears throat> after we've we've taken we've covered our tracks then Khalitsa is done and it will be effective Mimon of Shach either the co-wife was never pregnant and this chalitza is the element that releases her or it was the birth of the child that releases this woman from any uh, yibum requirements and that was accomplished by having waited the nine months uh, we continue in the Gemara Rabbi Chanina Omar Li'atz <coughs> Moshlosha for as far as the woman is concerned herself she has to wait three months as we already described as any woman has to wait between uh, relations with one man and a subsequent man. Lechaverta li'olam. As far as the co-wife is concerned, she has to wait an, uh, uh, an unlimited amount of time until she knows whether or not there was a child. The Gemara asks, <coughs> Why doesn't she do chalitza, according to Rabbi Hanina, after nine months and either way, she will then be uh, released, as we explained. Abaye bar oven v'rav chanino bar oven amri travayu. They both explain. Gzera shemo yehe vlad ben kayama. <clears throat> we have to take into consideration that that co-wife may in fact have yes given birth, and the uh, exemption from Yibum is the child, not the Chalitza. And the Chalitza that we would do, if we were, yes, to do Chalitza, the Chalitza would be meaningless. However, the public doesn't necessarily know that. V'nimtza ato matzricha kruz, kruz means an announcement, l'kuhuna. If this woman <coughs> would, uh, would choose to marry a Kohen, now a Kohen in general is forbidden to marry a woman that was participant in an actual uh, effective chalitza. In our case, if it's discovered that the co-wife bore a child, the chalitza that we would have done would have been basically a meaningless and ineffective chalitza. The birth of the child <coughs> is responsible for the uh, freedom exemption from yibum, not the chalitza. And we would have to announce to uh, make it clear that this woman is not really a chalutza. And as a result, her marriage to a Kohen is acceptable. The Gemara asks, if that's your whole concern, 
let's do the chalitza after nine months and have the valitzrecha and let's make the announcement. And then <clears throat> her marriage to a coin will not be questioned because people will have heard the announcement and uh, they'll be made aware that she is muteris to a kohen. The Gemara says, no, we can't rely on the announcement. Dilma Iko da Havi Bachalitza, Falo Havi Bachroza. There might be people that were present at the Chalitza or aware of the Chalitza and not aware of the announcement. They'll see her marrying a Kohen, the Amri, and they will conclude, Kosharu Chalutza la Kohen. And they will conclude that a Chalutza is a type of woman that is allowed to marry a Kohen. So, because of this fear, <coughs> this <coughs> uh, consideration of Dilma Ika, the Havel Chalitza, the Havel we don't uh, we don't do Chalitza uh, after the nine months. The Gemara continues. Note, there's a long question. Tanan, uh, a quote from the Mishnah on Kuf Yud Chesamet Beis. <coughs> We're dealing with a woman that we knew to be Zukuka to a Yavim. She had a status of being a candidate for Yibum. And the woman tells us, Nitan li ben b'medina sayam. Uh, I uh, had a child of, while abroad, vi Omran, she continues to tell us, Meis b'ni v'achakach ba'li. <coughs> the child died. And the child's death was followed by the father's death, by, by her husband's death. And as, as, as a result, her husband died, leaving no children, and I am still, I am bound to the Yavam. Nehmen, as she is believed, as we explained in our previous shiurim, she is simply maintaining <coughs> the original known status that she had. However, if the story is as follows, she tells us that she had a child, Meis Ba'ali, V'achar Kachbini, first the father died, and then the son died, <coughs> by telling us this order of events she's basically telling us <coughs> the, my husband died leaving a child <coughs> upon his death true the child died later on but a woman like that is not bound to the Yavam and she is attempting through her words to enable herself to marry Lashuk so we have a woman that had a status of being bound to the Yavam <coughs> and through her testimony she's changing her status she's not believed we do take into consideration what she said, even though we're not believing her. We're requiring chalitza. In other words, we're not allowing her to marry straight out in, uh, some outsider. That's a function of our not believing her. <clears throat> However, she doesn't do yibum. Well, according to her words, she wouldn't be doing Yibum. So that's the, that's the manifestation of Choshishin Litvorel. <clears throat> that we do take into consideration what she said, and we do not allow her to do Yibum in accordance with her words. Now, in this story, we dashed underline Choletzes. Chalitza is done. The Gemara asks, the <clears throat> Lechosh Dilma Asu Edim, Maybe it would be better for her not to do chalitza, because Adim might come. The Amri ke de ke Amra, and they will verify her words that the child died second, and she wasn't zakuka at all, and the, she wasn't bound at all because her husband, in effect, in effect, left this world while the child was still alive, and the chalitza that was done according to the source was an unnecessary chalitza and she <clears throat> and if, if she does the chalitza we're in effect re- making now uh, we're now requiring this announcement uh, t- t- regarding the kahuna that her marriage to a kohen is acceptable she's not a chalitza now, so what do we see from here? We are telling her to do chalitza, and we're going to be making this announcement. So, this is not like Rabbi Hanino. Rabbi Hanino, because of uh, situation, and uh, uh, his, uh, his reluctance to rely on uh, announcements, so he said, no chalitza. 
And here we are saying, yes, chalitza. Yes, chalitza, and in all likelihood, yes, announcement. Omar Rav Popa. Rav Popa says that this source is dealing with a woman that is begrusha. She is a divorcee. And as such, she isn't going to be marrying a Kohen to begin with. Since in her past she was a divorcee, a grusha is forbidden to the kuna anyway. So we're not putting ourselves in the position where a, an announcement would be required. Rav Chia Braid Rav Huna Omar, the Omra, the woman in telling us the story, is saying, Ani Vehu Nichbenu Bimaora. I and he were hidden in a cave. And as such, there is no chashash that witnesses will come and tell us and verify her story. Uh, thereby uh, allowing her to marry a Kohen. Therefore, we say, she does. Th- therefore, the source, because it was a case like that, where there aren't going to be any witnesses showing up, as per her story, that she was in a cave, and it was dark, and no one could have seen them anyway, so she's going to be a... And this source can has the luxury, therefore, of, of saying, yes, do Chalitza, and not worrying about witnesses coming to verify her story, which would have then showed that the chalitza was unnecessary. But in a case where there is, would have been a fear of witnesses coming, so then in fact, Rabbi Hanina would tell you that we would not go ahead with the chalitza, because doing the chalitza would have required the announcement, as we explained earlier. The Mishnah. Shte Yevomas. These are two women each one married to a to, uh, each one is married and the two men are brothers so you have two women that are married to two brothers zu omeris meis bali vizu omeris meis bali each one is saying my husband died zu asura mitnei baila shel zu we must uh, recount a halacha that we've learned in, uh, in a previous Mishnah. The Mishnah had mentioned five women that cannot testify about uh, they cannot testify about the death of a husband and uh, uh, that one of those is a Yavoma. Yavoma is the wife of of one's husband's brother. So information that she says uh, will cannot be uh, accepted for the... Uh, can, uh, one cannot accept the information <clears throat> that might, might have been helpful for you when it's information from your husband's brother's wife. So that... Uh, the woman, true, she's believed to say on herself, "My husband is dead." But in order to free, in order to free the woman from Yebom, we have to know that her husband's brother is dead, and that that information that her husband's brother is dead is being um, revealed by a woman upon whom she cannot rely. And therefore, as far as she is concerned, her husband's brother is not dead. So therefore, she cannot marry Lashuk. Le, the, uh, the Mishnah continues, Lazu Adim Velazu Ain Adim. One woman has witnesses that her husband is dead. The other woman does not have witnesses that her husband is dead. Again, we're continuing with the uh, opening case of these are two women married to two brothers. So, S. Shiesh Lo Adim. The woman that has witnesses concerning her own husband's death, Asura, she cannot marry Lashuk because she doesn't know about her husband's brother being dead other than through the testimony of a woman that, you can't, that she can't rely on. The S. Shein Lo Adim, the woman that does not have witnesses regarding 
her own husband's death. All that there is is herself. All she she is saying that her husband is dead, but without the support of witnesses. So as far as herself, as far as herself being considered a woman without a husband, she is believed. A woman is believed to say, "My husband is dead." And as far as her husband's brother, well, regarding that, there are two witnesses testifying about his death. Therefore. This particular woman, the woman that we're describing as, as Shane Law Adim, she can marry Mashuk. She can marry out. Lazu Bonim Velazu Ain Bonim. One woman has children, the other one does not. As Shiesh Law Bonim Muteris, the woman that has children. So obviously you have a case of a woman who whose husband died without children. She, a, 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 a case of a woman whose husband died leaving children. So she's, can, uh, she's now simply a widow after saying my husband died. She can marry uh, Lashuk. The S. She'ain law bonim, the woman who doesn't have children. So she's a ca- this is a case of a woman who testified that her husband is dead, leaving no children. Asura, she cannot marry Lashuk. She is a Yavoma. The Mishnah continues with a reference to the beginning of the Mishnah. Nisyavmu uh, umesu hayivmin. The women at the beginning of the Mishnah, there was a We'll say there was. We mentioned there were two women that were married to two brothers. There was a other brothers of their husbands that were around, were still around. And these two women, after they had testified that their husbands died, so they went ahead and did yibum. And then those. Yivmin died. Asuros Linose. They cannot marry Lashuk because uh, each woman would have then experienced her own husband dying, leaving no children. They married uh, surviving brothers of their, they, they're married surviving brothers, they died, leaving no children. But there are still the issue of their uh, original husband's death. Which would would have been a uh, if we could know that for sure, so they would be free to marry. But the knowledge of each other's husband's death is coming from was coming from a woman upon whom each one could not rely. So therefore, the Tanakama says they cannot marry Lashuk. Rebbe Lozer Oimer, Hayil v'Hutru Liyivmen, the original testimony, my husband is dead. What, did, what, what was the result of that in this case? The result of that was enabling each woman to marry her brother-in-law. Those, those two other brothers that had uh, survived. They married them. Now, one should note that, that if, if we weren't relying on their word, uh, that would be an Esor Kores. It's called Eshes Ach. And yet, on their word, they went ahead and married those two other brothers. So, if if we're allowing them to do that, to marry their Yivmen, Hutru Lechol Adam, we can rely on the same information to establish that they that each one's husband is no longer uh, alive. Tonop. Uh, we should point out, by the way, that uh, a, a, a woman who then marries out Lashuk uh, in, in, in the worst case scenario that offense would be an Esor Lav as we have mentioned previously the Gemara we're opening up with a Tanaic source that deals with a case that's not mentioned in the Mishnah Lazu Tana Lazu Edim Ubonim velazu lo edim velo bonim. One woman, when she tells us her husband died, she has witnesses as well, and she also has children. The other woman, she tells us her husband died, there are no witnesses, 
and there are no children. Shtehen mutoros. Both women can marry Lashuk. So the, the woman that tells us uh, that her husband died uh, and she has uh, witnesses and she also has children. So as far as herself, as far as she is concerned, so uh, that she has children, she is not bound to the Yavam. So she's not bound. She can marry Lashuk. The other woman that doesn't have witnesses regarding her own husband's death, but regarding the Yavam's death, there are witnesses. So that enables her as well to be Muteres Lashuk. Uh, at, as we go on in the Gemara, we have a quote from the Mishnah. Uh, note the arrow helps you to align where this is coming from. Nisyavmu umesu hayivmen. The two women, after they told us uh, that their own husbands died, they went ahead and married two other brothers. Each one married a separate uh, brother to do yibum. And then those new husbands, their husbands' brothers, they died. Asurin linasi. They cannot marry lashuk uh, because at this point each one would be dependent on the other one's testimony and Yevamos are not believed to testify one for the other. Rebbe Lozer Omer Hoyo V'hutru L'Yivmin Hutru L'Chol Adam Since they, we did rely on them to go ahead and marry the two other brothers we can now uh, rely on their original testimony to marry Lashuk. Boi Rava there's a question the Gemara raises now. It's a uh, we have this marked as a long question. On the side of the Gemara, we have a topic heading introducing this piece of Gemara. Birur Tam Shitas Rebbe Lazar. We want to uh, analyze, investigate the uh, logic, the reasoning behind Rebbe Lazar. Shomar Shnei Yivmo Yivomo Ishnis Yavu Al Smach Amiros and Meis Bali Umeisuivmin. These two women that went ahead and married their uh, husband's brothers based on their testimony that my husband died and then those two new husbands, the two Yivmen died Mutoros Lashuk this is what Rebbe Lazar has said they can then marry uh, outside we're not taking into consideration anymore that the uh, two original husbands are alive the Gemara, boy, Rava, my time of the Rebbe Lazar. What is the basis of Rebbe Lazar that's matir these women lashuk? So it's uh, the Aleph Oy Dilma base structure. Aleph, do we say Mishum de Kosovar Tsara Meida Lachaberta? Is it because Rebbe Lazar uh, has his own opinions, a Tanaic authority, so he disagrees with that which we've seen in a previous mission, and he holds that. A tzora, a co-wife. Here you have a, a form of co-wife. They're they're co, uh, they're both uh, yevomos. They're two women that are married to two brothers. So he is of the opinion that a a tzora is believed to testify uh, concerning uh, the other one. Oi Dilma, mishum dehi loi mekalkula nafsha or is it by virtue of the fact that you have a woman who went ahead and and did something that would have resulted in a in a very uh, a, a, a major disaster for her if it wasn't true? She went ahead and married her husband's brother. If her husband would show up, then the woman would be ushered to both people. The children from the second marriage would be mamzerim. Be, big mess up for her and yet she went ahead and did that she went and married him uh, knowing all of those risks so is it is it because of that that she has this enhanced uh, believability and and not a function of a general uh, uh, approach of Rebbe Lozer that we believe 
this, these kinds of women one regarding the other. What difference does it make in terms of this analysis? What practical difference is there? Uh, the word Baalmo, uh, we're adding courtesy of Rashi. We look at Rashi at the top. The woman who went abroad with her husband, Ubov Yomra, and she came back and told us, My husband died. This Sora, not to be confused with the use of the word Sora at the, at the bottom of our previous Omit. Here, it's a reference to a standard form of co-wife. She had a co-wife that, that did not go abroad. Can she, the, the uh, co-wife who remained behind, can she marry based on this woman's testimony, her other, the co-wife that did go abroad with the husband? So will uh, will we allow the co- the co wife that remained behind to marry before the traveling co wife? E amris tsara mi idulachaverta. If you say that Rebbe Lozer has a general approach that co wives are believed regarding the other one, so afal gav the lo insiv, even though the traveling wife did not uh, get married yet. We will allow the Tzorah to get married on, based on the simple testimony that uh, our husband died. If you say that the woman's believability is because she put herself into a danger's way by marrying a, um, uh, the, a uh, surviving brother of her husband, well, then the... the, the, the uh, our attitude toward the, the non-traveling co-wife is as follows. Insiv Mansavina and Lawla Tsora. If the traveling woman would have would marry the brother in law, then we'll allow the co wife to marry out. The low insiv. If however the traveling uh, wife doesn't put herself in danger's way by having married a brother, a uh, husband's brother, then low Mansavina Law. We wouldn't uh, allow the Tsora to uh, get married because uh, fundamentally Rebbe Lozer agrees that a tzorah cannot be made al chaverta my so what is the uh, final approach with regard to Rebbe Lozer on the side we have a no say mivne heading so that you can see a house shape appears this is a nisoyon lif showed an attempt to resolve the Rebbe Lozer matim mitam dihi lo mekalko that her believability is based on uh, her own action of marrying the Yavam. And the inverted house that will appear later, Nisayon Lahazbir Shitas Rabalozer Mitam Achir, an attempt to explain Rabalozer through a different means. So the question is raised uh, what is the basis of Rabalozer's opinion? Toshma, Rabalozer Omer. Hoyul the Hutru Li Yivmin Hutru Lichol Adam. It's Mashma that the heter that she has to marry out is is based on the fact that she herself had done Yibum and she wouldn't have messed herself up unless she was actually telling the truth. Iamers Bishmodihi Lomikalkala Nafsha if you say that that's the analysis because she wouldn't have she wouldn't mess herself up hainu dehi insiv mansavina law therefore through that we understand what it says in the source that and therefore we would under we would say uh, that when she herself gets married we would allow the tsara to get married eloiamus mishum tsara miido lechaverta if, however, you say that a co-wife uh, would, is, uh, is able to testify about her uh, partner, Afagav Dolo in Sivnami, even if she wouldn't have married the Yavam 
they should be allowed. So that in the in the source from the Mishnah where Rebbe Lozer appears, it wouldn't have had to say since they married the Yivmen. Even without that, the mere fact that they testify that their husbands died would have been enough. El Shmamino, we see therefore from here, Taimo de Rebbe Lozer, Mishom de Insiv Hu, the Lo Mekalkula Nafsha. Rebbe Lozer in the Mishnah is then clear as holding that only because they married the Yavam and put themselves in danger's way that we allow them subsequently with the death of the Yivman to marry out. And so with that information then we would be able to apply that to the Nafkamina case regarding a standard co-wife that we saw above. Namely, that the standard co-wife, the woman who didn't travel, would not be allowed to marry unless the traveling uh, uh, co-wife would have married a surviving brother. At this point, the Gemara rejects the analysis. Rebbe Lozer that we just saw in the Tanaic source that we quoted, the Mishnah that we quoted, Rebbe Lozer is not reflecting his own opinion. Ledidi, as far as I am concerned, Sora Meido Lechaverta, a a co-wife or a partner in marriage can testify about the other one. The Afal Gav de Lo Insiv Mansevin and Law, and even if the that uh, the, the woman herself had not married a Yavam, we would allow. Uh, we would allow her to marry, uh, we would allow the other one to marry Lashuk, based on the testimony. <laughs> In other words, a, a Tzora can testify about her partner. But according to you who argue with me, who hold that a Tzora cannot marry Lachaverta, you should at least concede to me where the woman did marry her brother-in-law Mansavinon-law Mishum Dehi Lo Mekalkalonavsha that with that action having taken place then that would be very convincing that the uh, the original husband is dead and that the other woman uh, could marry out Verabonan why do they not accept that as well why are they not impressed with the fact that a woman who testified, my husband is dead, she went ahead and married her brother-in-law, and that still doesn't convince us that she is telling the truth. For Rabbana, the, re- the reason is, Tomus Nafshi implished him who the Ka'ofta. She was willing to, uh, to e- even ruin herself as long as she could cause ruination to the other woman. This is a pasuk when uh, featuring uh, the Shofet Shimshon Samson, the mighty, some might know him as, who at the end of his life was willing to die just at, 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 as long as several thousand uh, plishtim would die along with him. So uh, a person is, in this, as the Rabbonin look at these two women, the uh, a woman uh, would be willing to, after saying my husband died, go ahead and marry the brother-in-law just to make it appear very convincing that her husband is dead so that the other woman would think she can go ahead and marry Lashuk. That she's free to marry out when in fact uh, she was not allowed. Toshma. As we indicated earlier, you see the inverted house this uh, shows us that we're going to be analyzing Rebbe Lozer, but from a different, uh, a different track of thought. A woman who went abroad with her husband comes back and tells us, my husband is dead. She can marry uh, and... and, and uh, also receive her ksuba payment uh, that's due to her through her husband's death. The tsarasa asura, her co-wife, cannot 
marry out. Uh, because as far as the Tanakam is concerned, the information that uh, the husband is dead comes through a co-wife, and that's unreliable. Rabbi Lozer Oimer, Hoyol v'hutra he, hutra nami tsarasa. Since she is allowed to marry out with her own test, with her testimony that the husband died, the other, the co-wife is also allowed to marry out. So what do we see here? We see from the point that she herself is the testifying woman is allowed. Uh, that's enough, and uh, we we don't we don't wait for her to marry uh, to marry a surviving brother. Of course, in this case, there is no surviving brother, but we we see that the the uh, uh, heter is based on the. Uh, point at which she testifies that her husband died. That at that point the co-wife becomes muteris also. The Gemara rejects this conclusion. Ema hoyol v'hutra v'nises. The believability of the woman is because she went ahead and married out. She said her husband died, and she went ahead and married out. That is what enables the Tzora to marry. Of, of course, according to Rebbe Lazar. So that it's not the mere word, but it's the fact that she put herself in danger's way by marrying another man. Just imagine the original husband would come back, how much she, she would lose. So the fact that she went ahead and did marry another man, that's what gives her credibility with regard to the co-wife. The Gemara asks... If the uh, heter is because she went ahead and actually married, and uh, that gave her believability that otherwise a, a woman wouldn't mess herself up, the lechus dumo begito asoi. Maybe this woman who is marrying another man is actually a woman that had received a document of divorce. She was actually a divorcee. She was divorced uh, by that husband who had gone abroad. Remember, you have a woman who went along with her husband abroad. Maybe he divorced her while abroad. And she had uh, personal comfort in marrying some other man. Why not? She's a divorcee. She can marry another man. Fihai de ka'omra hachi. And that which she said, my husband died. Her intention was to mess things up for the tzara. Namely, by hearing that their, their, their husband died, the tzara would then go and marry someone else. And the husband never de- never died at all. And the fact that the first woman married someone else, that's because she had been divorced. But the Tzorah wasn't divorced. And this would result in the Tzorahs being messed up. So just, be- just because she uh, had married out, the first woman had married out, that doesn't give her believability. She's not putting herself into danger's way. The Gemara says, "E de insiv li Yisrael hachi nami." If in fact the the woman who said meis bali went ahead and married a Yisrael non kohen, a non kohen only kohanim have a restriction in marrying divorcees. If she went ahead and married a Yisrael, so then I would in fact entertain the suspicion that you just raised, and that her. Marrying someone else is not a sign of her of her self assuredness that she's telling the truth. This source that upon which we said that her believability is because she went and married someone else, the insiv lekayin. She married, in fact, a kohen. Now, if she had been a divorcee, she wouldn't be. She wouldn't go ahead and marry a kohen. The fact that she's married kohen, it's based on the uh, uh, it's based on her assur- assuredness, uh, the truth of her words that her husband is actually dead, and 
the fact is she went ahead and married another man. That is what, and the, that other man happens to be a queen. So it's clear she's not a divorcee. And the fact that she's marrying another man, that's what gives her uh, trustworthiness, believability in that the husband is dead. And it's concerning that case that Rebbe Lozer says the co-wife can also remarry. But not because a co-wife, a tsara, is believed to testify uh, or provide information for the other one, for her partner.